In today's video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how you can start dropshipping for completely free. That's right. No money down whatsoever. I love it. And best part is to make things even simpler. We're breaking it down into seven easy to follow steps. So if you've been wanting to start your dropshipping journey, but weren't exactly sure how, or you don't have much of a budget to begin with, then make sure you check out this video all the way through. So that way you can learn how you can get started dropshipping for free. Let's go. So before anything, before we get started, what exactly is dropshipping and how does it work? Well, simply put, dropshipping is a fulfillment business model. All you're doing is simply fulfilling orders by rerouting them. So let's take, for example, somebody comes to your eBay store and they make a purchase for a pair of shoes for $60. Now, instead of you fulfilling that order, once you get it, instead of you going to your garage, picking those shoes, packing them up and shipping them off, what's going to happen is this order is actually going to be rerouted to your supplier. Then your supplier is going to go ahead and take that order. They're going to fulfill it and update your platform with the tracking number, therefore saving you tons of time and effort. As you can see, it's very simple. There's not a lot to it. And you have a lot of time that you can reinvest back into your business to continue scaling, to get more money and keep growing. Now those pair of shoes sold for $60 and you source them for only $20. You only paid $20 for them. What about those extra $40? Well, that's your profit. You just made $40 in profit. Congrats. Now, a couple of benefits that come with the dropshipping business model is for one, it's a very low barrier to entry. To get started, really, you can start with a very low budget and you can start with pretty much no experience at all. On top of that, like I said, you can start with a low budget. So you're not going to have to have a lot of upfront capital to get your business started. If you do have a couple bucks, maybe four or five hundred dollars that you can use, then yeah, that can help you get started a little bit stronger than if you got started for free. But at the end of the day, you can get started for free and scale. So how do we start dropshipping with no money? Well, let's start our seven step process. The first one is going to be product research. We need to figure out what products we're going to sell. Now for this, there's some criteria for one. The products need to either have a wow factor or two, they need to provide some sort of value to the end user. Now, what do I mean by that? The wow factor has to be something that just makes them go, whoa, this is absolutely amazing. I need to make this purchase right now. The second one, providing value into somebody's life is just that. It needs to have some sort of value or it needs to do something for somebody or simply solve some sort of problem. Take, for example, the robot vacuum cleaners. Those have both a wow factor and they also have a value that they add to somebody's life. The value that they add is the fact that you don't have to sweep anymore. You could just have your little Roomba or your little vacuum cleaner just go around the house doing it by itself. The wall factor, whoa, I don't have to sweep anymore and it's doing it all by itself, it's automated. So as you can see, products like this are huge winners because again, they provide value and they have a wow factor. People see them and they think this is really cool. You are hired, baby girl, you are hired. Now, aside from that, I'm gonna give you guys a personal and professional tip. When it comes to picking a niche or when it comes to picking certain products, if you know about a particular topic, if you know about the demographic of people, try to go with that product. Me personally, I know a lot about photography because I used to be a photographer. It's something that I had a huge interest in and it was one of my hobbies. It still kind of is to this day. So because of that, I know how photographers think. I know what kinds of items they have. I know what kinds of problems they come across because I've come across them myself. So with that, I can use that same experience to start coming up with new products or to start looking for new products that can potentially solve those problems for current photographers. Aside from that though, there are tons of different resources that you can use to your advantage to help you start locating some winning products. And a lot of them, or most of them, are actually totally free. The first one being this YouTube channel. This channel that you're watching, the AutoDS YouTube channel, has a particular playlist called the Sell These Now playlist. On there, we have tons of different videos with the most trending products of each month, along with the best niches to sell and the best products to sell in different niches. Over at AutoDS.com, we also have a blog that has tons of winning products articles. Those you can use all to your advantage and you have complete and free access to them. Aside from that though, we can also check out places like Amazon and check out their best sellers, their hottest section and their most trending. And we also have handpicked product section over at autods.com once you sign on and create an account. So if you've been thinking about joining AutoDS or you're on the fence about it and you're not totally sure, then you can start your trial right now for just $1 for two weeks and check out what you get access to. So first off, you get access to the handpicked product section. This is filled with information of the best products that are currently trending and information that can actually help you make an informed decision on whether or not you should sell these. So let's just go ahead and scroll through here and let's check one of these out. Let's check this one out right here. This nonstick silicone pyramid baking mat. This is actually pretty interesting. 
So as you can see here, this actually has 15 reviews, not bad, and it has a 4.6 star review. So it has pretty good reviews. Aside from these reviews though, you also have a ton more information to help you make a better decision. So check this out. We have for one, the potential profit. So this tells you more or less how much you can make off of each sale. It tells you how much these items are typically being sold for and how many orders have sold through our suppliers. Then we also have an engagement score as well as a saturation score. Now what's an engagement and a saturation score? Well, an engagement score simply put is how much engagement this product has on social media. How many likes does it have? How many shares does it have? How many videos are out there featuring this product? And the other one is the saturation score. So this pretty much tells you how saturated the market is with this product. If you have something that is full and is in the red, I would avoid it simply because there's already too many people selling it. But if you have something like this, which is just before the red where it's busy or even when it's quiet, then this is the time that you probably want to get into it and start selling this product before it blows up. Now, with the engagement score, this can kind of go either way. So if you have low engagement, that's not too bad. That probably means that not too many pages out there are featuring this product. So that means you can swoop in purchase it, make a couple videos and start saturating the market or saturating social media with it. So that way you can get exposure with it. Now, if you don't know what kinds of videos to make or what kinds of advertisements you can do to feature some of these products, well, don't worry, we got you too on that one. So right here we have the social ads. This can give you both TikTok and Facebook ads. These are ads that are featuring this same product. You can use these as inspiration. And aside from that, we also have different websites that are featuring this product so you can see how people are selling it. We have some insights that give you some more information on the product itself and some more product recommendations. Now, the last method for product research that I'm going to give you is by going on TikTok. This is my favorite because this is how you can find the most trending and most recent products that people are currently going crazy for. So get on the TikTok app or go on the TikTok website. And once we're on here, all we're going to do is simply search up the hashtag TikTok made me buy it. Now, this is going to be easier to do on your phone, but once you search up this hashtag, you can actually filter for the newest videos. So look for the newest videos that have the highest engagement. The ones that have over 500,000 views, people are going absolutely crazy for. But you don't have to go that high. If there's anything that has maybe 50 or 100,000 views, then that's also something that could be worth exploring. Also, if there's a particular niche that you're interested in selling and you want to see what kinds of products are out there and people are advertising, then simply look up that same hashtag, but at the end type in, let's say dogs. So let's say we wanna get in the dogs or the pets niche. So we have hashtag TikTok made me buy it, dogs. And as you can see here, we're being shown tons of different products that are currently trending in the pet niche, or sorry, in the dog niche. Okay, okay, okay. This is gonna be the last product research method that I show you. This is actually my favorite one and I can't skip out on it, I can't miss it. I need to show you this one. So let's say we like one of these. Let's say we want to offer this one. This is a very common product. I've seen this in tons of places. So let's go ahead and click on their link, link on IG. Okay, so they don't have their products here. So I looked through some of the different videos on TikTok and I came across this one, the Bath Buddy. I really like it. I followed their link and I came to their website. Now, where can I find this particular item? I want to sell this in my store. Obviously, this is a very generic item and you can find tons of them on AliExpress, but just bear with me for a second. This is just for demonstration purposes. So look for the item that you want to sell and look for an image. So we found this yellow one right here. Now you need to make sure that you're using Google Chrome for this. So we're going to right click and then we're going to do search images with Google. That's going to use Google Lens to help us do an image search on Google. Now let's just go ahead and highlight it if it doesn't automatically pick it up. And then here on the side, you have a new panel that opens up that gives you all of the different options with all of the different websites where you can make this purchase or you can source this product. So the first link here is Shein, but if you keep scrolling, you're going to find a few more. And if you run out of options here and you can't find something like on, let's say AliExpress or Alibaba, then simply do find image source, scroll down, and then you can see you have a few more options. So now you have Amazon, Timu, AliExpress right here and a few more. So step number two, we need to find a reliable supplier. We need to find a supplier that for one can ship in a timely manner and make sure that your customers receive their orders quickly. You don't want to be waiting one month, two months for your customers to receive their items because we live in the day of Amazon. That is a thing of the past. Two to four week shipping speeds is just way too much. At the most, we want to stick to two weeks. If we can do anything faster than that, then even better. But again, we live in the age of Amazon. People want their orders literally tomorrow. But thankfully, a lot of people don't really mind having to wait a couple of days. They understand that not everyone is Amazon. So that gives you a bit of wiggle room. So try to keep it at a most of two weeks when it comes to shipping. Now, when you're vetting the different suppliers, here's a few suggestions and a few things that you should do before you make a decision. For one, look at the different suppliers and look at the reviews. 
not just the reviews for the products, but the reviews for the suppliers. So look at the different reviews for the suppliers, make sure that they have multiple reviews, go for a supplier that has at a minimum 50 to 100 reviews. Anything lower than that means that they're a fairly new supplier and uh, I don't know, you don't really want to go with somebody that's too new. You want to go with somebody that has experience and actually knows what they're doing and has a proven track record. So look for the reviews and make sure that they have at a minimum a 4.5 star rating. Another thing you want to do is you want to send them a message. You want to make sure you send them a message and ask them a couple questions. How fast do you ship your items? Where are your warehouses located? What's your return policy? All of these questions can give you some good indicators whether or not the supplier can be reliable. Also, when you receive those answers, make sure you pay attention to the communication and the grammar. If you get a supplier that has very broken English, then that means communication down the line can potentially be a problem. So you might want to avoid those. Try to go for some that are easy to communicate with and that can get back to you fairly quickly. Now, a couple different tips is for one, make sure that the supplier has global warehouses. At least have a warehouse in the country that you're going to be dropshipping in. If you're dropshipping in the US, make sure that your supplier has a warehouse in the US. If they have one in China, then that can really slow down your shipping speeds and there could be some shipping line interruptions and honestly, it can become a mess. But that's not to say that they're unreliable. There are some Chinese suppliers with Chinese warehouses that can get their products out pretty quickly. But for the most part, as a general rule of thumb, try to stick to suppliers that have warehouses in the country that you're dropshipping to. So if you're dropshipping in the UK, look for somebody in the UK. Also, you need to make sure that those products have good reviews as well, not just the supplier, but the products too. Now, when you're looking for your products and you're looking through their reviews, two things that you need to make sure of are gonna be, for one, make sure that the comments are not too generic. There's gonna be some people that purchase comments or they put fake comments. Those comments are very easy to spot. They're very generic and a lot of the times don't have anything to do with the product. They're gonna be something like, I love it, this is a great product, this is good, amazing. Now, what you're looking for is people that are saying, I purchased this product, I received it in a couple of weeks and the quality is great. And they added a picture. I purchased this product for my sister and she loved it. She uses it every day, it's great for this. I purchased this dog toy for my dog and it's still going, it's not broken. Here's a picture of it. These are the types of reviews that you wanna look for. Reviews that are specific to the item. All right, step number three, we need to figure out where we're gonna sell our products. Now, in this video, we're covering how you can start dropshipping for free. So that's exactly what we're going to be going with. But I am going to give you a budget of about a dollar. One dollar. So let's say we have one dollar to spend. This means that we have four main options that we can use to start dropshipping. I'm going to list these from the most expensive to totally and completely free. The first one is going to be Shopify. So right now with Shopify, you can get started for one dollar for one month. After that, it's going to be between $29 to $39. I think it really depends on where you live. I've seen the prices kind of fluctuate depending on the country. But here in the US, if you're paying monthly, it's going to be $39.99. If you're paying yearly, broken down, it'll be $29.99 per month, but you are paying the entire yearly cost. Now you get started with this for $1 for the first month. So if you can get started with Shopify, if that's something that you want to do and build your own website, then you can start selling on there. And once you start making money, then you can invest into one of the plans, whether it be monthly or yearly. The next one is going to be TikTok shop. Now, TikTok shop is fairly new and the prices are a little bit everywhere because it really depends on what apps you're using. But if you want a detailed explanation on how you can start dropshipping on TikTok shop, just check out this video right here. It covers absolutely everything you need to know to get started. So just keep that in mind. But quick tip. Don't sleep on TikTok shop. TikTok shop right now is an untapped gold mine. So make sure you check out that video. The next one is going to be Etsy. Now, Etsy is practically free, I guess you can say. Really, you're not paying anything until you actually list an item. And what you're going to pay is 20 cents. So if we're sticking to that $1 budget, you can list five items for $1. Etsy, however, in my opinion, is another one of those untapped gold mines. It's starting to get some people into it. Some dropshippers are starting to migrate to it, but right now it's still undersaturated. It does not have too many dropshippers on there. So you can start dropshipping on there and make some pretty good money. But you need to make sure that you're selling the correct niches. When you sell on Etsy, you are going to have to have specific niches that you're selling. You're not going to be able to sell things like a microwave or a pair of headphones on there. That's just not the type of marketplace. On Etsy, you're gonna sell a lot of handmade items, party supplies, crafting supplies, print on demand, t-shirts, hoodies, tumblers, things like that. Next up, we have Facebook Marketplace. Now, Facebook Marketplace is a free platform. You can start dropshipping on Facebook Marketplace for completely free. Now, it's not my favorite, but I do know a lot of people and I have heard a lot of success stories of people dropshipping on Facebook Marketplace. 
And the last one is my personal favorite when it comes to starting for free, and that's eBay. So eBay, you can start dropshipping for totally free. You create an account for free, and the only time that you have to actually pay money up front is going to be once you get the order. So you get an order, you place the order with your supplier, you pay for that item, and then it gets shipped out. Then you're going to get your money back once the payment clears from the seller. Now, quick note, every single one of these marketplaces is going to have some sort of payment processing fee or just some sort of fee attached to it in general. Etsy has something about a 6.5%, I think it is. eBay varies, but generally speaking, it can start at 8% depending on the item that you're selling. Shopify is a little bit over 2%, I believe, plus 30 cents as a transaction fee. And that goes lower if you have a higher plan. But that's just something to keep in mind. At the end of the day, it's not something that you pay at the beginning. It's going to be something that you pay once you make a sale. So step number four, we need to start importing our products. Now, when it comes to product importing, this can be very easy. And it sounds like a really easy thing to do, right? Well, it is. But it can be very time consuming. So if you're importing one or two different products, it's totally fine. It's going to take you a few minutes, maybe 10 minutes. But think about importing 20 or 30 products, especially if you want to import 20 or 30 products in one day eBay, for example, is a numbers game. You want to upload as many products as you can to there to increase your chances of getting a sale. So if you're trying to upload 100 products to eBay, how long is that going to take you if you do it manually? So let me show you how we can automate the entire process. Now for this, we do need AutoDS. So with AutoDS, the first thing that you need to do is you need to connect your store to it. So if you're selling on eBay, Etsy, Shopify, Wix, WooCommerce, or Facebook Marketplace, you can connect your store to it to enjoy the benefits of automation. So if we're sourcing our products from the AutoDS page, from their marketplace, or the handpicked products hub, all we have to do is simply click on import, and that product is gonna be automatically added to our draft section. On the draft section, we can go ahead and make any necessary edits. We can edit the title, the description, the price, the variations, whatever we need, all directly from the AutoDS dashboard. But let's say we wanna source our products from a different supplier. Let's say we found something on AliExpress that we wanna to add to our store to test out to see if it sells. So to do this, it's also very simple. All we need to do is find that product, go onto the link, go ahead and copy it or cut it. I always cut it for some reason. Then once we go back to our AutoDS dashboard, we're gonna click on add products. Now we can either do single product or multiple products. I'm gonna do one for now. So let's just do single. I'm gonna choose one of my eBay stores, the one in Australia. And then we're gonna paste the link here. As you can see, the supplier source here shows us AliExpress and the region is China. So it's shipping from China. Now let's click on edit now. And then it's gonna take us to our draft section. So this is the draft. This is where you can edit everything like I mentioned earlier. The title, the collections, if you're going to add it to, let's say, your Shopify store. If you're selling on eBay, it's going to have a few different categories here. Same thing goes for Etsy. Then you have your description, the variants or the different variations where you can adjust the pricing and the images where you can add, edit or delete any of them. So as you can see, we turned a five to ten minute process into less than a minute. Now, if we decide we want to add a bunch of different products, then we just do the same thing. Add product, multiple products. And we just start pasting all of the different links on here. So paste one, enter, paste the other, enter, paste the other, enter, paste the other, enter. And then all of these are going to be automatically imported titles, descriptions, images, and all to our draft section. So that's going to save us time from copying and pasting, saving the different images, uploading everything, adding the variations, adding the prices. It's, it's going to save us a ton of time. Yes, that is very important. Very important. Now let's move on to step number five. This is going to be marketing. Now, how are we going to market our products? Well, this is going to vary from platform to platform. So if you're selling on Etsy, it's going to be different to market your products than if you're selling on Shopify. So let's get started with marketing your own store. So if you're going to market your own Shopify store or your own website, this is a bit more complicated than if you're going to be marketing, let's say, Etsy or eBay. So if you're marketing Shopify, then you're going to have to actually spend a little bit of money because for one, you're going to want to spend on ads. So you're going to be running Facebook ads. But if you don't want to do that, if you want to cut down the costs a little bit, then you can try influencer marketing with influencer marketing. You can reach out to an influencer, somebody that's in the niche that your product is in and offer them a free sample, a free sample in exchange for content or a quick promotion or a quick shout out, maybe a quick video, some content that you can repost on your page. Another thing you can do is organic marketing, create blogs around your product, around a pain point that your product solves and use your product as a solution, create TikTok videos and Instagram reels, all showing the product and showing it off. Now, let's say you want to advertise your Etsy products. So Etsy actually has its own marketing campaign where you set a daily budget. So you can set a daily budget of a minimum of a dollar or more. And Etsy is going to take that budget and start showing off your products to different customers. It's going to push it out onto the first page, onto the first line. Now, the good thing about this is that you can actually choose the products that you want to promote. 
So if you have a few products that you're not really interested in promoting because let's say some others are doing better, then you can choose which ones you want to show off or to advertise to people searching for similar products. eBay runs in a somewhat similar way. They have two different listing options. They're gonna have the promoted listing standard and the advanced. The standard is gonna be the one that most of us go with because it's the most beginner friendly one. What happens here is you set a percentage. So that percentage is going to be taken out of the final sale. On top of the standard fee that eBay charges, they're also gonna charge you that budget that you set. So if you set a 10% budget, then they're gonna charge you 10% of that item for the marketing. Now, as far as Facebook, Facebook is probably gonna be one of the easiest ones, but it can potentially get you banned if you do it the wrong way. So with Facebook, you wanna be advertising in Facebook groups. So if somebody posts about something, if they ask a question and your item is relevant or it can help them out, link it to them. Go ahead and talk to them, leave a comment, tell them how it can help or just start a conversation and ultimately offer it to them or show them the link. Now, if you start doing this the wrong way and you start advertising your products to random people who ask completely different questions that have nothing to do with your product, you're gonna get banned. Those Facebook groups are gonna end up banning you and you're gonna lose access to that. So make sure that everything that you do on Facebook is relevant to the post. And they also have Facebook pay-per-click promotions, pretty much where you're gonna set a budget as well and Facebook is gonna push your product in the marketplace. Now, step number six, fulfilling your orders. How are we gonna fulfill orders quickly? Well, once we receive our order, we can go to our supplier's website and we can place our order through there. We can sign on, add our customer's details and ship the item to them. Again, like product importing, that's perfectly fine if you're doing a couple, but when you start scaling and you start getting 10, 20, 30, 40 orders, then this is also gonna get very time consuming. In which case, this is when you wanna start implementing automation once again. So with AutoDS, we have automatic orders along with fulfilled by AutoDS. Automatic orders, the way they work is you're going to give your login details to AutoDS for let's say AliExpress. So you're gonna log in through AutoDS to AliExpress. So whenever somebody places an order, AutoDS is gonna take your buyer account, they're gonna sign on, they're gonna place the purchase on your behalf and they're gonna ship the item to your customer. The other option is fulfilled by AutoDS. This is my personal favorite. So what happens here is that you don't need to have any buyer accounts. AutoDS is gonna use their buyer accounts, whether that be for AliExpress, Alibaba, Amazon, or any others. The only thing that you need to do is make sure you have a balance. So you're gonna to have to top up your balance, which is used to make a purchase for the products whenever you get a sale. So what happens is once you get a sale, instead of AutoDS using your buyer account, it's just gonna use its own. This can really help with using something like Amazon as your supplier. With Amazon, if they notice that you're shipping to too many different addresses, they're gonna restrict or block your account. If you're using the Fulfilled by AutoDS option, you don't have this problem at all. You're never gonna have your Amazon account touched, so your account is never gonna get banned or restricted. Now, last but certainly not least, step number seven. This is probably one of the most crucial ones, and that's provide amazing customer service or post-sale service. Now, this isn't necessarily just for post-sale, this is also throughout the entire sale. So if somebody has a question and they reach out to you, let's say they send you an email, then you need to get back to them at a maximum of one day. Do not pass 24 hours. If you pass 24 hours, customers are typically gonna go to either somebody else or they're just gonna simply forget that they sent you a message in the first place. And if that happens, you just lost out on a sale, you just lost out on a customer. And potentially they could be returning customers. So you wanna make sure that you get back to them as quick as possible with any inquiries. This is another reason why you need to have reliable suppliers. If it takes your supplier a week to get back to you, maybe I'm exaggerating. If it takes your supplier two or three days to get back to you, that's still too long because you're gonna to have to wait for your supplier to get back to you and then you need to get back to your customer. So make sure you choose a supplier that has quick communication. Also, post-sale. Make sure you follow up with your customers. If they have any concerns afterwards, make sure you address them again in a timely manner. So just make sure that you provide your customers with the best customer service, treat them with respect, treat them as the way that you wanna be treated. You never know, some of these customers might end up being some pretty high value customers, some of which could be returning as well. And that is how you can get started dropshipping with no money for completely free. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you smash that like button. It truly means a lot, especially if you made it all the way to the end. If you made it this far, then you did like the video. So make sure you like the video. <laughs> also, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring that little bell notification so you don't miss out on any future videos. With that, my name is Mario with AutoDS, and I'll catch you guys next time.